Merry Meet. Welcome to Witch Magic. I'm Dawn, and I will be taking you on a spiritual journey to all things magic and witchcrafts. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Witch Magic. So, a little bit of sad news. Um, last weekend, my sister and her family lost one of their dogs. Uh, she got hit by a car when she got loose and ran into the street. So that was a very sad thing for them. Um, this dog, her name was Nora, and she was very protective of my sister, Jamie. If she thought for one little bit of a second that somebody was going to harm her in any way, she would attack the person. Um, she would start barking, growling, show her teeth, and possibly bite. You know, my sister was very, very sad because she was very close to this dog. And um, we had her, one of her son's birthday parties the next day, which was kind of hard because you can tell that everybody was a little bit sad. Mm -hmm but they wanted to make sure that they acknowledged their son's birthday and let him have a pretty good day, even though they were sad of the loss of their dog. So it's always sad to lose a pet. I've lost many pets over the years and um, it's very sad because they're part of your family. You know, they become a very big part of your family. So with that note, I just wanna send out some positive vibes to my sister and her family and to the dog that passed. All right, so today I want to talk about the wonderful city of Salem, Massachusetts and a little bit about the Salem Witch Trials. I was born and raised in the New England area and even though I've moved around quite a bit during my early adult years, I found my way back here a few years ago. But the first time I've ever been to Salem was probably in the late 90s. I was excited and in awe to see all of the witch shops. And did you know that Salem is also called Witch City and that a real witch was voted to become mayor of that city? She refused. But it's amazing to know the amount of acceptance there was, and still is to this day. So her name was Lori Cabot, and she is a famous author, and she owns a few of the shops in Salem. I met her once in one of her shops. She seemed very down to earth. I didn't really get a chance to really talk to her a whole lot, but um, you know, I did say hi, and you know, I did tell her that I liked her shops and all that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, one of the other places I visited my first time there was the Witch Museum. And I saw a program about the Salem Witch Trials. So the Witch Trials began in June of 1692 after a group of young girls claimed to be possessed by the devil and they accused certain people of witchcraft. About 25 people were killed during the trials. 19 of them were hanged Six of them were actually men. The rest either died in jail or were crushed to death. In 1697, the Massachusetts court deemed the trials unlawful. Thank goodness they don't do such hangings today, right? Other countries actually burned witches at the stake. I'm sure you guys have heard about that. And I just want to like I just want to say that after I saw this program, and I'm going to talk more about it, more about the witch trials, but after I saw this program, we're walking out and there's this young couple, you know, a guy and a girl, and the girl was clearly upset. And I overheard her telling her, I guess it was her boyfriend, I overheard her telling him, how can they have, how can they say such things? How can they have such a show for people to see. You know, it's making witches look bad, blah, 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 blah. 
And I heard the, the guy say to her, honey, that's history. It's part of history and people should know about it. And I agreed with him. You know, I strongly believe that we should not ignore history. There is some things in history that, and I'm not trying to get all political here by any means, oh no, thank you. <laughs> but it's important to know about our history. Even though there were many bad things that happened, it doesn't mean that they're happening today. You know, things have come a, long, a lot better. We have come a long way with stuff like this, especially with accepting witches and pagans and Wiccans. You don't hear about witches getting burned at the stake or even people who aren't witches who are getting accused of being witches. They're not being hanged. They're not, you know, sent to their death. They're not crushed. They're not burned. All right. So it's, um, so I'm hoping this episode doesn't upset anybody, um, but this is a part of history and I really feel that we ought to know it to understand where we came from and how we are today. All right. Okay. So moving on. So <clears throat> the first person accused of witchcraft in Salem was Bridget Bishop. She was almost 60 years old and she owned a tavern, but she had trouble paying her bills and she wasn't very well liked it by her neighbors. One of those neighbors confessed to seeing her transform into a cat. Another said she appeared by his bedside one night only to torture him. She was even accused of making a building collapse by just simply looking at it. Bridget was the first accused witch to be hanged at the trials. Where she was clearly unliked, there were other accused who were respected by their neighbors, such as Rebecca Nurse. Others accused were John Proctor, Elizabeth Proctor, Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, Sarah Wiles, Reverend George Burroughs, George Jacob, George Jacobs Sr., Martha Carrier, John Willard, Martha Corey, Giles Corey, Mary Eastie, Mary Packer, Alice Packer, Anne Pudiator, I hope I said that right, Walmart Red, Margaret Scott, Samuel Wardwell Sr., Anne Foster, Sarah Osborne, Abigail Faulkner, and Dorcas Hoare. The people who accused them were young girls who claimed that the accused witches were responsible for bringing the devil in and the cause of their ailments. One of them was Abigail Williams, who accused 57 people. During my research, I came across some of the victim's last words. I must warn you that this is a little chilling. Elizabeth Howe said, If it was the last moment I was to live, God knows I am innocent. Rebecca Nurse, Oh Lord, help me. It is false. I am clear for my life now lies in your hands. Susanna Martin said, I have no hand in witchcraft. Bridget Bishop, I am no witch, I am innocent, I know nothing of it. Finally, Giles Corey's last words while being crushed was, more weight. You can visit the resting place of these victims at the Salem Witch Trials Memorial near the old burying ground. The first time I've ever been there, I felt a real heaviness and sadness, and I felt that I had to read every stone, and I did. And it still, it still kind of gets me to this day. On a more positive note, today, there were over 1,600 1, residents of Salem who identify as witches and they walk around proudly as they should. I feel very comfortable visiting and I often wear my witch hat when I go. I even had friends ask me to take their family there because they wanted to tour the witch city with a real witch. I was honored to do so. And the kicker is that they are very Catholic. I mean, to the point where they go to church every Sunday, they hang out with their priest and everything and all the congregation. Uh, their sons went to you know, the church's youth center, all that kind of stuff. 
but they accept me for who I am. My granddaughter, who was five at the time, wanted to visit Salem, so we went. We were walking around. We were there for actually a while, and she said she wanted to see a witch. She was wondering where all the witches are. Other than her grams, of course, me. <laughs> I laughed, and I told her that they are everywhere. So she was expecting a bunch of people to be walking around wearing pointy hats and tattered dresses, maybe even flying on a broomstick, I don't know. I was really hoping to be able to catch Lori Cabot that day, but I guess it just, it just wasn't meant to be. Regardless, we all had fun that day, and guess what? My daughter Darcy bought my granddaughter a beautiful witch's hat that she picked out herself. So there is a lot of fun things to do in Salem. And like I said, I've been there many times. Some things that I've done there, aside from visit all the shops, is once me and Chris went on a fairy house hunt, we were given a map and had to locate where all the houses were. They were mostly set up in shops. We've been through haunted houses. We've seen some of the locations from Hocus Pocus. And one time we went to a shop and Juliet got sprinkled with fairy dust. This was when she was little. There is also a statue of Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched in the center of town. So I just love visiting this place and I will be making another trip in the near future. And if I happen to come across any events like Halloween, which I have to tell you, Halloween is a crazy time to go because <laughs> it is so packed full of people. It's just crazy. I never went on Halloween night, but I've been like the weekend before and whatever. And holy cow, it is just insane. So anyway, that is a little bit about the Salem Witch Trials and Salem, Massachusetts. I do live close by to Salem. So yes, like I said, I would be making more trips. Well, thank you friends for tuning in. Let me know if you've ever been to Salem and what your experience has been like. And if you haven't been to Salem and whether you live around the area or you're kind of far away and you want to take a vacation, I highly recommend visiting Salem. There is so much history there and you you will get such a witchy, magical vibe. And trust me, you will feel like you belong. So, yeah, let me know what your experience has been like if you've been. Um, and if you plan on going, I will be more than happy to answer any more questions that you guys might have. You can connect with me on Facebook Instagram, Patreon, or send me an email. I will have the link to my website and Facebook group on the show notes, and you can find all the other links from there. And you can also catch my videos on YouTube. So have a very magical week. So that's going to do it for today. I will be airing these podcasts about once a week, so be sure to tune in. You might want to choose to get notified when I air so that you don't miss a thing. If you have any comments, please feel free to connect with me on my Facebook group. I will leave the link to that along with my website on the show notes. Blessed be.